Hi, welcome to my messy ass kitchen. I don't wanna talk about it. Okay, but what I do wanna talk about is my current struggles, right? Because everybody wants to know the struggles because watching someone just live a good, happy life is not entertainment. We need to see the struggles. Okay, so here's the thing. My current struggle is sugar. I cannot believe I'm even saying this, and I know, I already know the reason behind it. I've talked to my doctor, and I've also talked to you guys, AKA my other doctors, because anytime I say anything, my comment section is flooded by people who all of a sudden are doctors, all of a sudden went to school for years and years and years and are very educated in this topic. But I currently am like fully addicted to sugar. It's a problem. When I cut out alcohol, I replaced alcohol with sugar, okay? Because alcohol turns into sugar in the body. Even if you're just drinking clear, even if you're just drinking vodka, hey, vodka soda. Once I cut it out, I started to crave things like Reese's peanut butter cups and Oreos and ice cream. And now, six months later, <laughs> six months later, I have such a raging sweet tooth because I gave into it. That's the problem. I did cut out artificial sugar there for a while, for like two weeks, and it was great. It wasn't that big of a deal. It's all mind over matter. And that's the thing is like right now, I don't wanna cut it out. I've cut out coffee, not just for my own reasons, that's for my gut because it was affecting me. It was making me really tired. It was making me crash really hard. I cut out sodas because that's something that I was drinking when I first cut out alcohol as well. I was drinking like Dr. Pepper, Coca-Cola, things like that. I switched to Coke Zero. Then I basically cut out Coke Zero. It does not have great ingredients in it. It's not good for you. So I still drink caffeine but I'm trying to get better about that too. So like for instance, this is my current thing that I'm doing. I love Alani's, I use them as pre-workouts. I drink them almost every single day, like love. But I am noticing that I have a crash afterwards. I feel so good on top of the world and then I crash, which is totally standard with caffeine, right? And it's 200 milligrams of caffeine. So now I'm on the train of trying to replace this with this. And today is the first day that I drank a whole one of these and bitch, I feel amazing. I feel so alive, I feel so good. I feel so full of energy and so clear. This is 150 milligrams of natural green tea caffeine. It's got zero sugar, L-thionine, biotin, vitamins B, vitamins B6, B12. So like only five calories, which is like kind of too good to be true. The taste is good. So I'm trying to replace this with this. Today is day one and I'm doing really good because I'm not gonna drink an Alani today. Now hear me out, I'm not gonna totally cut this out. I just won't. I love my Alani's, but I'm also not trying to be drinking it every single day of my life. One thing at a mother time. Anyways, my point of this is my sugar addiction. I'm a sugaraholic. Let me show you my freezer. I have cookie dough bites. I have Jenny's ice cream. I have Yasso bars, churro, waffle cones. I mean, it's just, it's so much sugar. And that's like my little sweet treat every single day. Since I don't get to have coffee, I need to just get better about eating certain sugars over others. For instance, this is a great example. There is a major difference when it comes to your fitness journey, when it comes to your health and wellness. There's a major difference between these two things right here, okay? Way lower in sugar and it's used with things like cane sugar. It's not, there's no shit. You know what I mean? All that artificial crap. I'm just very much trying to improve myself and the way I feel, the way I look. And when I say look, I don't even mean my body. I'm talking about like the, my skin, the veins in my eyes, the yellow in your eyes. Everything goes down to what you're eating. So it's not just like, oh, I want my tummy to be flatter and my waist to be snatched. It's like, no, everything. I want my skin to glow. I know someone who currently is having vision issues and their doctor said that like it all, that literally can come from diet. Just eating poor quality food your entire life can literally lead to vision issues. Like what? I'm sorry. Oh, it's so frustrating. <laughs> I don't really go into public by myself. I haven't much in the last 10 years. There's a lot of reasons behind it. And there's also like some trauma behind it, like some PTSD, because I've actually had a couple of experiences with followers like eight years ago when I was by myself that just kind of like made me scared. That is a thing of the past. I go to like group workout classes alone, but I don't really go like in public alone. And today I'm doing that. So I went to the orthodontist and I got my wire changed and all that. And so now I'm at the mall. I want to go to Lululemon. I'm going to make a thing of it. I parked in Eman Marcus. I'm going to go through. I'm going to get Starbucks. I'm going to go to Bath and Body Works. And I'm going to go to Lululemon. And I know it sounds so silly, but this is the first time that I'm going to be at a mall all by myself. It's gonna be 10 years, I think, actually. So I'm so excited to do this. I'm like, it's a public place. There's people around, everything's gonna be fine. This is just on anxiety, social anxiety, feeling the need to be perfect. I just have a lot of anxieties around that. And this is all a part of my journey and my growth because Jacqueline's journey is not just about losing weight. It's about feeling good mentally, doing things that challenge you, things that are good for you. And so I'm gonna be comfortable in public by myself. And if I have an anxiety attack, 
I'm gonna take care of me. No one can take care of me like me. I got this. Okay, let's go. I know, I know I seem silly to you guys. I get it, but to me, this is not silly. The second I walked in, I got distracted. I love these Dior shoes. Like, I think they're so cool, and Jordan does not like them. I bought him a really cool pair a couple months ago, and he returned them. I will say that's something that I love about Jordan. He does not care about designer stuff, designer labels, price tags. He is just a simple man. He's like, I will wear what's comfortable and what works. Me, I'm like, Gucci. How do I get a quick pit stop because Creed just came out with a new scent? Nope. Goodbye. I did it, you guys. I was at the mall for an hour. I secured the goods. I got Lululemon, I got Bath and Body Works. I met so many of you guys, so many followers. Everyone was so sweet, thank you so much. Sometimes I feel really bad, like when I meet people, like for instance, I just met a couple of people at the mall. They're like old school followers. Like they're like, I've been following you since you filmed at your, like in front of your refrigerator like 10 years ago and then I look like shit and I feel so bad and we take pictures and I'm like, and I just look so awful. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, you've been following me for so many years and you meet me like this. Like, oh God. But anyways, it was great. Successful trip of the mall. Now I am going home. Wow, I really checked that box. <sighs> I cannot believe that I'm even recording myself right now. Oh, but this is Jacqueline's journey. <sighs> I promised myself when I started this series that I would be honest with you guys and raw with you. Um, I rarely cry anymore. It's the one thing that I'm really grateful for. I have so much good in my life. I don't feel sadness a lot, but I've just been going through it. It's been so hard recently, just losing friends. And this journey has been so lonely at times. I have such good friends. Like the friends that I have are so amazing and they're my family. They're like my God given family. And I'm so blessed for that. But the friends that I've lost, it's just so, it just hurts so bad. And I know that it's like, I should be grateful that I see people's true colors, but it just f***ing sucks. Losing certain friends, it feels like a breakup. And it's just so hard because when I started making decent money, like 10 years ago, the first thing that I started doing was giving it away to friends and family. Like I have always said that God, the only reason that I have made so much money in my career is because God knew that I was gonna give so much of it away. And I've always been like that. It's like, if you're with me, I'm paying. I'm paying for every plane flight. I'm paying for every meal. I'm paying for every hotel room. When we go shopping, I'm buying you a designer bag. Like I just love to give. And I worked in therapy for years on certain friendships that I felt like were very one-sided. And it's like, I was giving at people's lowest points at, you know, pay, putting them on a six figure salary and paying their bills and first class flights and private jets. And then when I stopped drinking and I stopped partying with them and I got clear minded and I started setting boundaries that I worked through for years in therapy, all of a sudden those people just are nowhere to be found. And it's like, when they were at their lowest, I was there. Now that I'm figuring my shit out, they're just gone. And it's just so hard. It's so lonely. And I know that it's a good thing, but I'm just struggling. It just sucks. And right now, I'm just so sad. I'm glad that I don't have a bunch of people in my life anymore that are around for the wrong reasons. I'm like, did they pretend to like me for years and years and years? Did they pretend to love me? Was it real? Was it a lie? When they had nothing, to offer me or give to me, I gave them everything, physically and emotionally. I just like poured into them, I sewed into them, I paid for people's therapy. I did the most, I did everything I possibly could to help my friends. Like if you're my friend, I am gonna fucking take care of you. Now they're just gone and it's so lonely. Anyways, bettering yourself and protecting your peace is not always easy. Sometimes it looks like this and it fucking sucks. That's the first time I've cried in a really long time. <laughs> It is what it is. I'm gonna count my blessings. I am done. I am so done. Oh my God. Me and Jordan both got really sick. We both had the flu, influenza A. It was terrible. We both thought we were gonna die at one point and it just has lingered. I still have like a nasty deep cough. I still have to blow my nose like every 20 minutes and it's been two weeks. It's crazy. During that time, I didn't take care of myself. I didn't work out. I didn't sit in the sauna. I didn't go on walks. I didn't do anything, okay? I literally just, drank chicken broth and ordered soup and to go. And I got into the habit of that. Now I'm better, right? Like I'm not sick anymore, but here my ass is still not working out, still eating like crap. And I've gained weight back. This is the first time that I've gained weight back. 
So it's not much. I'm not like bothered by the way, to be quite honest with you. I'm not, I'm just bothered by the way I feel. I'm so fucking done with the way I feel. I feel like shit. It's 11 o'clock at night right now. We just got done watching Next Level Chef. I just sat on the couch and I just ate crap. I just snacked and I just ate crap because I've gotten myself back into a terrible habit of just eating what I want whenever I want. And I feel disgusting. And this is the issue is right now in this moment, eating healthy sounds like a punishment, right? Cause I'm so used to eating like crap the past couple of weeks. But once I get myself in the routine for a couple of days, I'm gonna be like, oh my God, I feel so good. I miss this so much. Because right now my brain feels fuzzy as can be. I have a literal migraine. My head is pounding. I feel exhausted all the time. And my mood is just shitty. I told Jordan this past week, I'm like every morning I wake up and I low key am like triggered because I feel like I'm hungover. Like I open up my eyes and I'm just like, oh my God, I have not felt like that in seven months. And that's all food. That's just diet. That's no alcohol. That's making me feel so hungover. Oh my God, I'm done. I booked a Pilates class for tomorrow. I'm doing an ass and abs class tomorrow. The party is over. I'm sick of feeling like shit. Let's go. I'm not trying to sound corny because I used to watch people say things like I'm saying and I just thought that they sounded so corny. Legitimately, you guys, the way you feed yourself, it's actually crazy how different you feel. Now that doesn't mean it's easy at first. It's really hard at first. Like I know that the next couple of days are probably gonna be pretty terrible for me because I've gotten so used to eating so much artificial sugar every single day. I've gotten used to eating so much heavy, unhealthy carbs every single day. So cutting that out, there's gonna be like a little withdrawal period. Like I'm gonna be like, hm, my little baby, right? But like once I get through that hump, I'm gonna feel so good. This is why people say food is fuel. I can't stand those people. Have I become one of those people? Whatever, I just wanna feel better. Jada, what are we about to go do? Do a Pilates class. We're gonna go do a Pilates class. Today I had to film so many different things, partnership sponsorships, and then just like personal stuff, fun stuff. I just have like a whole list of stuff because I'm going to LA. I was supposed to leave tomorrow morning at 5 a.m., but it actually just got changed. So I gained a day because I'm going for an event and I got done with everything like an hour ago. So I've just been laying on the couch editing and all of that. Now it's time to wash my face and leave. And it's the last thing I wanna do. You know how it is, like you're done and you're just like, goodbye. I wanna put my PJs, but this is like one of those things that you have to like, test yourself like how committed are you to this right because i know i'm gonna be so happy i did it. i'm gonna feel so good i've got my girls tally and jada they're sleeping over with me tonight because jordan's out of town we're keeping the fort locked down so i'm gonna take them with me which is another thing that i have loved to do in this journey and in this process is just taking my friends and family like i'll pay for their classes and be like listen i'll pay the 10 bucks i'll pay the 12 bucks whatever it is come with me and then like they get into it and then you have like that fun partnership and then you can go out and grab like a smoothie afterwards and stuff like that so i'm taking talia and jade to their first ever pilates class and we will see how that goes i guess my point of that was literally just to say that if you book a class go like that's one thing that has helped me so much. Book a class, commit it to yourself. When you're in a good mood and you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna work out tomorrow, book it. We did it, you guys. We just went to camp and just ate them. They did such a good job. I was actually like shocked over how good you guys did. They killed it. I would actually really go back. It was a really great class. No, I, I definitely love that. Would do. Look how shiny I am. Skincare is working. Okay, I got a bunch of new shoes because my shin splints are killing me again and it sucks. It sucks so bad because I have not had any leg pain, knee pain, any of that in probably like three months. I almost got into a place where I was like feeling so good and confident about it. I was like almost low key bragging. <laughs> Sounds so dumb. I was like, my shin splints are totally gone. I will say like they were, they were completely gone. But now that I'm doing more running, like I started incorporating like running intervals. Like I'll sprint for 30 seconds, walk for 30 seconds, sprint for 30 seconds, walk. I've been doing that the last couple of weeks and I took two classes back to back Thursday and Friday and they both had so much sprinting in it that now like my pasty legs I'll show you like all in here it just feels like my shins are like torn up my knees hurt and all that and I know I was not wearing the proper shoes I am still on a journey to find like these shoes just when I think I found it I'm like you're not it I will say that losing 30 pounds made my knees and my shins feel so much better everybody was like 
you have to stretch. It's all about the stretching and the icing. And at the end of the day, I tried all of it. I tried the CBD creams. I tried the Icy Hot. I did the Norma Tex. I did everything. At the end of the day, when I lost weight, that's when my knees and my shins start feeling much better until recently. I got a few different shoes. These are obviously not going to be running shoes, but these are the brand On Cloud. So they're not the cutest things ever, but I got them if I'm going to be like walking around the mall or if I'm like going to an amusement park. We'll try them on and see if I like them. Okay, and then like on a side note, wondering if I'm ever going to be a girl that could wear these shoes. Like, I think they're so cute on other people, but like, will I wear them? Probably not. These are the ones that I am so excited about because people rave about them. I own a pair of Hoka's. I bought them and I returned them, but these are the newest ones. I'll link them for you guys down below, but these are the newest ones. I couldn't find them in Tampa, so I had to order them online, but they look so comfy and these are supposed to be amazing for shin splints and knees and all of that. So I'm so excited. And God, there's something about getting a new pair of shoes. It just makes you want to work out. Okay, and then I have one more. I have these. These are the Pegasus by Nike, and I freaking love the Pegasus. When I was at my heaviest and my shins and my knees were killing me every day, I owned a pair of neon green Nike Pegasus, and they were the only shoe in my closet that genuinely took away my knee pain. When I would travel, I would only wear the Pegasus because they helped so much. So they just came out with a neutral black and white, so I got them because I don't care even what they look like, really. I'm just trying to look for comfort over here. I sound like I am 90 years old. What's it gonna be like to be 90? I'm 33 and shit's already falling apart. Yo, I literally left my car running. Like got out of the car, walked away and left it running. That's where my head is at. Like, oh, go ahead and just take my car, guys. Here's the keys. Oh, <laughs> here, while you're at it, take my credit card too. <laughs> Happy Thursday. Well, that destroyed me. My heart rate is probably uh-huh, still 170 beats right now. Woo! Okay, so let me just say, I feel so much better. My mind feels more clear. And more than anything, you guys, it's like the first 10 minutes of working out like that is just miserable. I don't wanna be there. I'm thinking about everything else. I'm thinking about all the things I have to do, all the conversations I have to have, places I need to be, people I need to call. And then all of a sudden, it's like your heart rate gets up, you get into the flow, the endorphins kick in, and all of a sudden you're like, God, I feel so good to be here. And you know what it is? It's like the reward that happens after you're done working out. I've been talking to my nieces a lot recently just about like work, because they're at the age where it's like, they're teenage girls, they're talking about like my first job and what I did, and it's like, no one likes to work, right? But you love getting that paycheck. You love what that paycheck does for your life, right? It's the same with working out. It's like a lot of times I don't look forward to working out, but I love the benefit. I love what happens afterwards. So it's like right now I'm still kind of miserable, but I know in like 10 minutes those feel good endorphins kick in. I'm gonna be driving home, listening to Taylor Swift, and I'm gonna feel so good. And the rest of the night is just gonna be better because I came and worked out. Okay, thanks for coming to my TED Talk. Moments like this are when you see results. This is a big, big difference in me that I did not do and I was not capable of six plus months ago. I worked today, I filmed a bunch of stuff. I did a full face of makeup. I mean, I've got on lashes, the whole thing. A whole, whole beat, right? Jordan has nothing to do tonight. We could go out, get some sushi, get a good meal, but no, I'm going to wash my face and go work out instead because I told myself that I was gonna do this. I made a promise to myself. This morning I did not work out because I chose to sleep in. I was exhausted, so I slept in and I booked a class for 7.30 p.m. So I'm gonna wash my face and I'm gonna go work out. And that is not the easy choice, but I'm telling you, you start seeing results when you start making the difficult choices. I know it sounds corny, but it's just true. I used to make the easy choices and be like, why am I not losing weight? Why, why is my body not changing? Why don't I feel better? And it's when I started making the difficult choices. Like I spent an hour and a half of my makeup today. I don't wanna wash it right now. I don't wanna wash my face. I don't wanna go sweat uncontrollably and come home with a beet red face, you know what I'm saying? But like, that's what I'm gonna do instead of going out to eat because I made a promise to myself that I wanna be better and I'm committed to me. So that's what I'm doing. It's little things like this that lead to change. I really sound kind of miserable but I'm actually really looking forward to this Pilates class. Also, I've heard amazing things about this pineapple road cleanser, so I'm gonna try it right now because this is a full beat. Full beat. So let's see if we can get it off. Well, it doesn't burn your eyes. Damn. A little bit of this goes a really long way. Wow. Well, damn. It definitely worked. Now let's hope it doesn't break me out. All right, I am sitting at a red light. I am on the way to pick up my nieces and my sister-in-law because we are going to Olivia Rodrigo. So hear me out. I made these plans when I was drinking. <laughs> that
that's like the realest thing that I could possibly say to you right now. But I did make these plans while I was drinking, okay? I made these plans like eight. Was it, oh, when was it? I don't know. But I committed to doing this while I was drinking. I was like, yes, I will absolutely go to Olivia Rodrigo with you. I'll take you, right? So now that I am no longer drinking, I actually don't really enjoy concerts, especially one like Olivia Rodrigo. Like I, yeah, I like Olivia Rodrigo's music, but I'm not like a fan, okay? It's not like it's Blink-182. It's not like it's Drake. Like this is something that I'm doing for my nieces. I love them, so I'm doing this for them. It's a two hour drive for me and I'm just like, I can't. I, I cannot drive there two hours, drive back, be in a huge arena filled with germs. Okay, because I'm so anxious about getting sick right now because I have too much coming up in my life to get sick. I just simply can't. And do all of it sober, it's gonna be really, really hard. So what I did is I rented a party bus to surprise them. So we're gonna, a meeting at their house right now at the same time as the party bus to surprise my sister-in-law and the girls and take them to Olivia. And then maybe I'll get like a little work done on the way there or something. They would have been fine with me giving my ticket to someone else. Like I know they would have totally understood. They would have been like, okay, we get it, Aunt Jackman. But I didn't want to do that because I committed to this. So I'm going to go, I'm going to have a good time. But I'm being honest with you guys because that's what we do here. This is definitely a trigger for me. I will want to drink tonight. And that's only happened to me probably like two times since I quit drinking. I'm putting myself in a situation that's not going to be easy but that's okay because although I will wish in the moment, I'll be like, oh God, I could use a drink because I'm gonna feel overwhelmed and extremely stimulated. I don't actually wanna drink because I have bigger goals that does not involve alcohol. You know what I mean? So we're gonna go. I'm gonna drink a uh, Georgie, drink a little energy drink, drink a poppy and uh, change my mood. We made it on the party bus. <laughs> Watermelon poppy to keep my bitch ass going. Gosh, times have changed. I'm a new woman. I'm home. Mm. It's one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Oh. oh my god, it's one o'clock in the morning. I just got home. I have to, you know, wash the face, do all the things. That's a milestone for me. That was my first concert that I went to without drinking. I will be honest, that was not easy in the sense of I did not want to drink, but I did want to get rid of my social anxiety. I don't like crave alcohol necessarily, but I do crave to be out of certain situations. And if I were to drink in that situation, I would just feel better about it. I did it, I'm proud of myself. I did that for my nieces. I'm so happy I went. Olivia Rodrigo is so talented. I'm just so happy I got to see my nieces. So excited to see her. I'm very, very proud of me for doing that. I never thought in a million years, if you would have asked me a year ago, like I would not believe you. I went all the way to Orlando to a concert and didn't have a drink. Like I would have never thought that was possible. I'm so tired, I can't even think straight, you guys. I'm gonna go wash my face and restart. I love you. I'll see you in my next one.